still Davey, still One Up Gaming, still episode 378 of the One Up Gaming podcast. So we're going to go straight into this week's news. After you're going to win a FC24 um, football code, then please subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave a comment on any video just saying soccer, football, I win, I want this, give me this, all that kind of good stuff. And we'll give out this code for the Xbox um, within the first week of the December so not this week I think it'll be next week I'll record it again and then it'll be the week after we'll announce the winner so probably two weeks from you watching this we will give out a code for the Xbox so we'll go straight into this week's news and the first bit of news is Xbox confirms plans to appear at the Game Awards after last year's no show after a noticeable absence last year, Microsoft con confirms that Xbox will have some news to share at this year's Game Awards. In an email sent out to some, including IGN, Microsoft confirmed that it won't be a no-show again at the 2023 ceremony, teasing fans that there will be major announcements and more Xbox news you won't want to miss. While Microsoft did not exactly say what type of Xbox news would be at this show, the company has many games in development and it recently acquired Activision Blizzard after a lengthy process. Xbox's biggest reveal at the Game Awards 2021 was a sizable gameplay trailer for Hellblade 2, Senua's Saga. But the studio having several games in development including Avowed, Stalker 2, Everwild, Stirred to K3, Hellblade 2, um, I was going on about again, and a Fable reboot. It's really hard to pinpoint whether it will share updates on all or some of these games or if Xbox plans to announce an entirely new game. Uh, regardless, game was set to air on December the 7th. There will be a few changes to the show's format as producer and host Jeff Keighley confirmed in a recent Q&A that the show will phase out the world premiere label and plans to beef up security to avoid, to avoid any stage crashes. Regarding games that either Xbox that Xbox either owns or are published has several titles up for nomination for the 2023 Game Awards um, but yeah we won't go that much into that so it would be quite good because of how long the Xbox Activision Be The Lizard bio has been going on for it'd be really good, really sweet if the two years ago Microsoft went in right, right that one, that one, that one, that one. We're going to make these new games, even though technically we don't own the studios and the IPs yet. But as soon as the process goes through and we actually have the license to do these and we own the IPs, we can just announce an almost finished game. So you imagine like, the December, them coming out on stage and saying, yeah, we've got a uh, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, um, mixed game so it's, you play both characters in the game world um there's rock and roll racing ultimate and uh, there is yeah, just random stuff that people just would be blown about i think that could be absolutely amazing but what do you guys think leave comments anyway next up robert patterson's the batman suit is officially coming to arkham knight for free after Robert Pattinson's suit for the Batman was seemingly accidentally revealed for and then quietly removed from Batman Arkham Knight on the Epic Game Store last month, WB Games has confirmed that it's officially coming as a free skin soon enough. Nintendo Switch's Batman Arkham Trilogy will get first dibs on the cowl when the collection releases on December the 1st. The suit will come to Batman Arkham Knight on other platforms at a later date. It was revealed in a new Arkham Trilogy trailer on Tuesday, with no further specifics given. You might remember when Patterson's cowl spontaneously appeared on, Epic's, on Epic Games' digital storefront late in October, arriving without notice as a silent update for Rock City Studios' eight-year-old Batman Arkham Knight. The developer had released plenty of costumes and other content well after its original release, but it had been years since players saw any kind of significant addition. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I must be one of these people that I'm just not a big fan. I mean, I'll play the game. I love the games, the Arkham games. 
to be fair, it was like the first first game I loved the most out of all of them. It was just a very simple, like nice low. I say low budget, but like a nice game set within one environment. It's just great. I love that sort of thing. Um, but what do you guys think? Are you excited for the new skins? Are you excited for more bits coming out? Or do you just not really care anymore and you've moved on? Um, let me know in the comments. So next up, Fallout fans react to first look at Prime video series, praising accuracy and Walton Goggins' goal. Ghoul? Prime Video and Bethesda Softworks have opened their vault to finally give us a handful of images from its upcoming Fallout TV series and fans seem pretty pleased with the first glimpse. While we're still awaiting an official trailer, the drop of new images has been met with largely positive reactions, a lot of whom are mostly just impressed that the weapon and outfit designs seem to be ripped straight out of the games and the show it's based on. Even Walton Goggins' ghoul character looks like a one-to-one -one copy of the kinds of characters one might have met in an entry in Fallout 4. Why would they pull that? And that's just more things. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll give it a watch. I enjoy watching some of these programs. Uh, I've never been a massive fan of the Fallout games, but I will give it a watch. I'll have a see how it is. Are you guys excited for the Fallout TV show? Or are you waiting for the trailer to actually proper get a, a look into it to see how it sort of runs? But we'll go straight into the next bit of news. And that one is Sony signed a partnership with Guild Wars maker NC Soft, and it mentions mobile games. Sony signed a strategic global business partnership with NC Soft, the South Korean company behind massively multiplayer online role playing games such as Guild Wars and Lineage. Now, I must be an idiot because I, I know Guild Wars, but I've never played it and I've never really heard of Lineage. Apart from when I was watching someone make like low budget PCs and was seeing how it runs. So it must be like a quite a big esports sort of game, maybe. Outgoing Sony Interactive Entertainment boss Jim Ryan and NC Soft CEO Take Kin Jim. I don't know, I'm sorry. Issued a joint statement signaling the deal, which will see both companies celebrate in various global business fields, including mobile. No projects or games were mentioned, but it sounds like the idea here is for Sony to leverage NC Soft's tech. As it plots to make inroads into the huge game mobile gaming market. Um, um, again, I don't know. I'm not a big, massive fan of mobile gaming either. Um, if something good comes out, I will give it a go and have a play and see how it how it actually feels and goes. But the vast majority of the times, I'm just not bothered about it. So we're going to the next bit of news, and that is. Nearly half of CD Projekt now working on The Witcher 4. Nearly half of CD Projekt now working on Witcher 4, codenamed Polaris, following the release of Cyberpunk 2077 expansion Phantom Liberty. Confirmation arrived during CD Projekt Red's latest earnings report, which indicated almost 330 developers, or just under 50% of its development staff, were working on the highly anticipated sequel as of October 31st, 2023. CD Projekt CEO Adam Krasinski, is it Kikinski? I don't know, also confirmed the company expects more than 400 developers to be working on Polaris by mid-2024. The Polaris team had grown to 260 members as of July 31st, 23, more than a third of all CD Projekt Red, but development on the game is ramping up following the release of Phantom Liberty. The report also has more than 25% of developers listed as in transfer as they transition from away from Phantom Liberty and CD Projekt Red has said previously that many of those team members would join Polaris alongside Cyberpunk 2077 sequel codename Orion. Um, yeah. yeah. What do you guys think? Um, I mean, I liked the, the Witcher 3. I thought the movement was a bit rubbish when you're trying to c control the character. Uh, I really enjoyed Cyberpunk 2077. That was even before all the updates and the stuff. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a good little game. I thought that was fun. So I am excited to see where 
they go next. We're well, going to the next bit of news, and that is Five Nights at Freddy's surpasses Split to break the record for horror studio Blumhouse. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie has officially become Blumhouse Productions' most successful picture ever. Blumhouse founder Jason Blum, I make sense, sense now it's called Blumhouse, announced the news on X saying that the game to film adaptation recently passed M. Night Shyamalan's split, making it the studio's biggest picture to date. It's not quite clear exactly what Blum means by biggest, but according to Box Office Mojo, it seems he was referring to each movie's box office performance. The movie statistics, statistics, statistics god damn, site says that Five Night Freddy's now has a worldwide total of 283,107,315 dollars compared to splits 278 years so it's a little bit bigger it's an astounding feat especially considering the movie adaptations reported budget of 20 million blumhouse's five nights at freddy's success started with the movie but brought in a scary 78 million domestic box office haul on its opening weekend viewers continued to head out to check the ad adaptation as the weeks continued with its second weekend in theaters raking in 19 million uh, this is I mean, what can I say? The um, Five Nights at Freddy's movie, I've never played the games. Sorry, I played it once and I was like, oh, this is boring. Just flicking between screens. So I was a bit, mm, I'll watch it, I'll see how it is. It was a fun little movie, it really was. It was like entertaining, funny, had a little bit of horror, but not a massive amount. And it was just the right amount of just good heart, really good heart in the game movie thing. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend going to watch it. I thought it was a fun little movie. So we'll have a quick break now and we'll come back with the UK Top 40. So back in a few seconds. <laughs> 